land high quality clients? And here's the question. Do you have the confidence to follow through and actually find those folks and engage them and actually sell them a quality offer? I have a phenomenal guest here today that has been a friend of mine for quite some time. I love what he's doing on Instagram and we met <laughs> through his meme page, which is actually really, really funny. But this guy knows a thing or two about captivating an audience and really helping you target and, and sift through who it is that you truly want to work with and how to build the confidence inside of you to really land those high quality clients. So without further ado, I want to introduce Ray Akers to the show. What is going on, Ray? Hey, how are you doing today, man? Dude, I'm doing awesome. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. So I appreciate you for, for spending a few minutes with us today and talking about this topic of high quality clients how do we attract them? Do we have the confidence to actually get in front of them and, and deliver an offer and, and deliver on our promise? We have to talk about that today because I know there's a lot of folks out there that are hitting that glass ceiling. They don't know exactly how to break through it. Their growth is stunted right now when it comes to building their business. Yeah, this is a real struggle for a lot of businesses that start out. So I'll tell you a little story. So when I first, the first business I had was a painting business. I was a painting contractor and I painted murals as well because I was an art student in college. So I got out of that and said, hey, I want to do some art stuff. And I was putting out these bids for, you know, painting and all this other stuff. And I wasn't getting, I couldn't close anything. Like I'd, I'd send them out and nothing. And one day, and, and here's the thing too, there's a, there's a lot to go into, which is why we'll get some great conversation here. Part of it was I was bidding against myself because I couldn't imagine paying that money because I, I would do my bid and I'm like, okay, this, you know, to paint this house is like, $4,000. And I thought, ah, I could never pay $4,000 to have a house painted. Never happened. So I'd say, well, let's knock it down to three. And I'm like, ooh, that still sounds like a lot to me. And I, again, I was just negotiating against myself. And next thing I knew, I priced myself so low that anybody who was looking at other bids that would have been accurate were like, well, I don't know what this guy's problem is because this is way too low. There's no way he's going to deliver a good product. And so I couldn't land the big fish that really would have helped me. You know, I'd had higher profit mod margins, and all that other stuff. And that went into the confidence. Number one, and, and Grant Cardone said this, he said, if you can't imagine buying what you're selling, you'll never be able to sell it. So you have to get over it in your own head. Cause like I said, sometimes you put these numbers out and you're like, Oh, that sounds like a lot of money because you don't even believe your own value. And that goes into the confidence where you don't believe what you're doing is worth it. Mm. And that's a real so, problem for a lot so of people. I have, So I got a question for you. Why would you not pay four grand for a paint job, especially if, it, if it's like, uh, you know, uh, multi rooms in a home? Well, here's why, right? Because most of us as solopreneurs, when we start out, right, you're doing everything by yourself because you can't imagine you, it's just too much money coming out. So as a painter, I was like, well, I would paint this myself. So I would do it myself to quote unquote, save the money. So as you start trying to send out these proposals, or re regardless of what you're doing now, Again, when you're first starting out and you're like, I need to conserve my resources and my, my cash flow, I got to constrict this, you start doing everything you can by yourself to save money. So you're always looking for things on the cheap. Most people start out that way. So when you start throwing out these big bids in your head, you're like, well, wait a minute, I'd never do this, hmm. right? I wouldn't pay this much money. So it's hard for people to start doing that. And then again, when you're in front of a potential client and you're trying to justify the number and in your head, you can't do that. You can't convince that other person. It's, it's almost impossible. It's the truth, right? You know, it's funny. The reason why, I, I mean, I love Russell Brunson to death. He's, 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 he's a good man and we became great friends over time. And I was in his inner circle program for two years and uh, he's been a client of mine for quite some time. And, you know, it was funny when I start, when I raised all my prices and really started to level up my, 
my, my, my price points and my services, I said to myself, if I don't know what it feels like to pay this, right? And it's funny, his buddy, Dave Woodward said the same thing. Like, if you don't know what it's like to spend 25 grand on something, you can't empathize. Like it's, it, it's very hard to empathize. I can't, I don't want to use the word can't, but it's very hard to put yourself in, in somebody else's shoes and expect them to pay that kind of money. And so I remember cutting that check, right? Like it was yesterday. And I remember what that felt like. And dude, it was scary. It was a big investment. Is this going to pay off in the long run? I don't know, right? There's yeah. so many ums and ahs and uh-ohs going on in my head. I remember. So when I get clients now coming in the Brand Accelerator program, or you know, I, I tell them, this is a big investment. You're either all in or you're all out. Like, I would hate to have you spend this kind of money and you peter out. And we have that sometimes where our price is a little bit on the high side for somebody. And I've had somebody use this on me where I was like, ooh, you know, they gave me the price. I was like, ooh. And they could tell. And they said, I know that price stings a little bit, but I want it to sting. And he said, if you, if you don't feel that pressure, because it was, it was a service, right? So I was uh, trying to learn Facebook ads. And I was like, oh, man, I got to buy this course. And he was like, oh, I don't know. And he goes, if this was an easy investment for you, you wouldn't follow through with it. Because this is a little painful for you, I know you're going to take this training seriously, and you have to make it work. It's good for you that this hurts a little bit. It's okay. And not, not, not everybody that buys something or that you're selling your service to is going to have that reaction. But when they, if somebody does, it's not a bad thing. You can actually use it. And like you just said, like, I know what it's like to be in your shoes when you're like, ooh, it's a lot of money. And just you say, it's okay to feel that, but that's going to motivate you to make sure that you get the most out of what I'm selling. I want to dissect that a little bit because that's a great point that you – that you brought up. So I'm going through a continuing ed course right now with a great friend of mine who's just a wizard when it comes to wordsmithing and, and really taking what's in your head and making it resonate with your audience. So he asked me to come on board and, and do this four week training with him. It's, I'm getting a lot out of it, believe me when I tell you. But what's interesting is it's a, group, it's a group atmosphere, so there's about six of us in there right now. We had a great conversation on Saturday and one of the students was like stuck, like doing five things, trying to figure it all out at, at once and, 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 and really just getting in his own way. Another student came in and started asking him some really pertinent questions, AKA challenging the F out of this dude. And like, you could see the whites in his eyes start to get bigger and bigger when this woman started pulling these questions and like really challenging him. And so I like what the salesperson did to you by challenging you. I think great leaders, I think you become attractive, you become more confident, you become more of a catch, if you will, when you challenge. And, and, and I think a lot of us, when we're just starting out or we just lack that personal development or that acumen, that business acumen that we need, to really like scale, we don't ask those questions. And when somebody says, oh, I got to think about it, we'd say, okay, think about it and run. And we run away. We run out the door. Like we can't get away fast enough because we're scared. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, 100%. So a couple of things in there. So number one is that being a, so once you get your first rejection, right? And there's a great book by Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street. He talks about his selling process, which is a loop. So he's like, I go into every single pitch or sale knowing they're gonna, the number one thing they're gonna say is I need to wait, I need to put it off. And he says, once you hear that, you need to loop back into your sale. And all you have to do is use this word, which is I understand what you're saying, but let me ask you about the product, about what I just showed you. Does it sound good? Does it, does it sound like it would work for you? 90% of the time, if you've done a good job, they're gonna say, yeah, it does. And you go, okay, awesome. Then you're gonna go back, you're gonna loop into your sale and build more value. But the other thing is, uh, you know, getting into sales 
And again, and this gets difficult when you're trying to land the big fish because you, you view them way up. You view you down here, right? Like I'm down here and they're way up here. And it's hard to talk to somebody who you think, there's, I shouldn't even say talk, it's, hard, it's even harder to sell to somebody who you have on a pedestal. But when you go into sales, I look at it, regardless of who they are, as their, how would I treat a friend of mine? So if I had a friend and I said, hey man, I started jogging, yes, you know, for two months ago and you should try it. And I sold, you know, sold them on this, you know, starting to jog in the morning. I said, hey, you should do this. Get up in the morning. Don't worry. I'll pick you up, all this other stuff. And if they said, nah, I wouldn't go, okay, cool. We'll talk to you later. I go, now you're, as a friend, I would say, now wait a minute. This is, I'm telling you, this is really going to help you out. And I'd go back and tell them all of the things. I wouldn't let my friend just brush me off. All right. When I'm going to say, even, and again, it's hard because you're, you're looking at this guy, like they've got all the money and I, and I want some of, they're at a higher level, they're successful and I need some of their money. You know what we're saying, right? I'm going to provide them a service. It sounds cheesy and, and bad when you say it like that, but you're kind of, like I said, you need to kind of either build yourself up or knock them down a few pegs to say, Hey, they're out of business. Maybe they're further along than I am. But if this was my friend and I really believe, and again, this goes into the confidence, and I really believe in my service, I believe I can help them, then I need to treat them like a friend. When my friend says, you know, maybe I got a friend that needs to lose weight and I know it's going to be good for his health, it's going to be good for his kids, his family. If he says, eh, no, I'm going to be like, yeah, but come on, man, let's, let's do this. It's going to be good. And the part about which you talked about earlier, challenging. A lot of entrepreneurs, they like to be challenged, but they're because they're the owner, they don't generally get challenged. They need it. That's why they read books. That's why they watch videos. And probably why they're watching this. They feel like I need something to pull me out. So when you're in a sale, just like you said, it's okay to challenge someone. You don't feel like it because you're like, who am I down here to challenge someone, this big fish? But you really should. And a lot of people respond to that. Say, hey, come on, man. I know this is tough, but you didn't get it. You didn't join. You didn't start your business to be mediocre. You're on this call for a reason. You don't like where you're at. Let's do this. It's time for you to jump. And this, now we're motivating. We're killed and we're pulling them through. And like I said, that a lot of that has to do with confidence. And I was horrible at it in the beginning. But you, the more you do it, you're like, all right, I'm just going to say this one thing and see what happens. And then you say, you're like, okay, well, you didn't hang up on me. So let's go, right? So let's keep going. So no, listen, I think it's great points. There's a couple things that I want to highlight here. <laughs> There's one thing that, that you said that I, that I loved and it was people are hiring you. If they could figure out themselves, they would, they would do it. Like they want somebody to grab them by the, by the collar and jolt them. It sounds crazy, but it's not like you don't, you don't get ahead, right, by hanging around mediocre people, right? So you need to level yourself up. And here's the other thing that I want to say. We all put our pants on the same way. And we need to remember that. Like, just because you may have a couple more zeros in your bank account than I do, doesn't mean anything. And so I've done this in the past and it's bit me in the ass several times. You get starstruck, you get, you get a little bit of a jolt back from them and you go run right. in your, and you go run in a hole. And let me tell you something, that is the quickest way to lose a, a client's trust and respect. So when I get those, so I've made a pact with myself. If I get another tattoo, I'm going to have it tattooed on me somewhere. But it is simply this. Do not deviate from the process. I don't care if it's Tom Cruise or Tom Smith. You will get a vicious bite in the ass if you try to skim or cut a corner because of so-and-so who has X amount of accolades and so on. You're cruising for a bruising if you do that. So now we have a team, we, you know, we had team meetings about this when we had somebody like that come in and I don't blame my team. I blame myself. I was jumping through hoops of flames for this guy and I should have just held my ground. Right. And it was a lesson learned. So now there's no deviation. This is the process. And if you don't respect it, there's plenty of other people out there that do what I do way cheaper. You're probably better off going with them. And, and that's that. 
But here's the thing that we were talking about before about challenge. You don't have to be a prick about it, right? You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to start getting, uh, you know, uh, mouthy because people, when you're on a sales call, we know more than them right? We know more than them. So it's frustrating to us that they can't see what we see. I get it. I get it. So here's a couple things you need to do. One is you got to think, all right, if I was, if I were them, what would I, what would be running through my veins right now? Okay. That will eliminate you being jumpy and jumpy, jumping down their throat, right? The other thing that I would, I would do, which takes longer and nobody has the patience to do it, but I'm getting better at this by the day. It's leading with your brain and not with your mouth. If somebody says, you know, I got to think about it or, 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 or something along those lines, I would say, I get it. You're right. I would need to think about it too. This is a big investment. But let me ask you a question. What is there to think about? Yeah. But just go at them. Like, what is it? And see how I tone, like, see, did you hear my tone? Did you, did you see how I, 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 I frame that? Like nine times out of 10, people will just run away from that objection. But if you, t if you have the confidence to address it, you're going to get deeper into what is really paining them. And nine times out of 10, it's just fear. So you got to, you got to help them through that. Think about it. Yeah. And that's similar. Like I said, what I, you know, you're saying, well, what is there to think about? And that's where the process that I like to do, which is like the first thing I'll say is, so what do you think about the product? Cause you've already said the price. So we got to find out, is it the price or is it the product? And if they can say, if we can say, well, what do you think about what I, you know, the service or whatever it is that I'm offering? Do you think this is a good, is this a good way to get you from where we talk about you are now to where you want to be? And if they say, well, yeah, I mean, it looks at then I know if they say it like that, then I know, okay, they're not sold, which again, which is a great way for me to start looping it. Okay, here's something else I forgot to tell you about. Boom, 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 right? So a couple more things, or again, we're going to remind them of where they're at. I had somebody told me, he said, well, now's not a good time. And I said, do you think this is going to make you money? And he goes, yeah. I go, then when is it not a good time to make money? <laughs> like, when is it not a good time to have more money? So, and again, I know, because when I first started out, the the idea of challenging someone, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I want to make two quick points. So Quentin Tarantino said this once. This is way before I ever got into sales or anything, but it really stuck with me. He said, you know, when actors go in for an audition, and a lot of times what we do when we're quote unquote selling, it's a lot like an audition, right? There's this guy or this movie producer. In our case, it's a client, and he's he's talking to three or four other people because he wants to fill a role. So he said, you know, so many actors go into the audition room and they're so afraid. Like they have this, again, where the, the movie is up here and it, and it makes sense, right? You want to, because it's going to help you financially. And, in, and sometimes when it's a big name, you're like, man, if I could put this on my resume, right, this is going to be so great. But he said, you have to understand as an actor, the movie director, producer, whoever, they need someone to fill this role. They need you, right? You need to go into that audition as like, they need me. I just need to show them that it's, I'm the right person. And once you, again, it's kind of knocking them down a few pegs and then putting yourself up like, hey, they're not calling me because everything's going amazing. They're calling me because they have an issue or they, they want my service because either whoever's doing it now is doing a bad job or, you know, they need to do it better, whatever it is, right? But they're here for a reason. So you need to go into it as like, I'm helping them. They need me. And it's so oftentimes we jump in, it's like, we need them. We need this money and we need this name on our resume. And then the other thing I wanted to tell you, because you said something, right? So you're like, you, you say something and say, and then somebody comes back at you with something and it kind of, you're like, oh shit, right? So now I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to run in my corner. So there's a thing, it's, it's kind of a, a congruency test. And uh, this happens in dating as well. So like if you're going, if you're talking to a girl and you're like, oh, uh, you know, you're, you're spitting your game, you know, I've, I've got this, I've got that. And you're saying all this stuff. And a lot of times, again, it happens in dating, but it happens in sales where you're going to say a bunch of stuff. And somebody who's heard this before and women have been picked on, a, picked up on, tried to be picked up a million times if they've heard it all before. 
So they're going to say, oh, yeah, really? And then they're going to say something to test to see if you're really all you, you're saying that you are. And it's a little congruency test. So if you're saying, I'm gonna do this, and you're, you're really sure about yourself, and somebody says, again, if we're, if we're prospecting, and your cl potential client says, oh really, well what about this? And you cower, like you said, they immediately know, no, you're not everything you say. That congruency just went straight down the tube. So you need to be prepared, yeah. right? Yes, come to the meeting, this is a great this is a great segue into what I wanted to say. You got to come with both barrels loaded. You have to. So you got to know learn more about them. You got to learn more about their pain points, you got to learn more about what they're struggling with, you got to ask the right questions, and you got to have that confidence from within. So I can hear people now saying, "All right guys, I've been listening to you for 15 minutes now. Like, all right, give me something that I can walk away with." you know, tangibly, right? Here's what helped me. And, I, and, I'll, and I'm gonna ask you the same thing. I spent massive amounts of not money, but time on personal development. I began to build me up, nothing else. And that led me the confidence that I needed to speak with these higher net individuals. So I read books like Just One Thing, right? A great little book here. You can read on the toilet. That's how, that's how quick it is, right? I've read books like The Four Agreements, and I get these insights about myself that, you know, you're reading the lines on the, on the page and you're going, ooh, that one hit me, you know? And you know the line, you know those sentences I'm talking yeah. about too, you know? And you're like, okay, I got to underline that. I got to highlight that one because that one stung, right? When you start to really understand you, that lack of confidence will start to dwindle. It will, it will. And then you'll start to build yourself up because I don't know about you, Bray, but people buy, I, I'm a true believer of people buy your confidence before they buy your product or service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it, sales? Is it, sales is just a transfer. A uh, transfer of enthusiasm, right? So I'm enthusiastic about what I'm selling to you. I need you to now be enthusiastic with me. And once I get you there, we're good to go. If I stumble and I can't get you there, we've got issues. So I'm going to share with you something that I use. And by the way, I'm right there with you, right? Always, what's the, you know, it's funny because you, you learn things, and but you have to relearn them. Or somebody says it in a different way, you're like, oh, yeah. Or maybe you grew and now you're here. Now this other book takes you a little bit higher. But something that I, that I use still to this day. So just like you said, do your research. Now you should have generally, you should have some kind of exploratory call or something where you have information about where they want to be, why they're not there. You have to get that information. If you don't, you can't sell to them. You don't, you don't even know what they want or why they want it. But once you get that information, that's gonna help you. But generally, like we talked about, as far as objections, you know there's the first one's gonna be, let me think about it. And then the other one's like, well, the pricing or whatever. Find out what they are for you. What I did is this. I recorded myself giving myself, so I gave my last, like, okay, so you saw the pricing, which, you know, which of these packages do you think is, is best or you know, whatever, right? And then I have my voice saying, oh, you know, this all looks good, but I really need to think about it. And then I recorded my own voice with my, you know, responses to their, to their objections. And that way, again, because for me, I, I like to listen, it's, it's easier. If I'm in the shower, I play that. And I've got three or four objections that I know people are going to say, and I have what I will say in response to that. So by the time I get on the call, because again, this is a lot of it is, is rehearsing, right? Just with anything you do, you get better the more you do it. Yep. Um, you do design, right? When you first open up show, Photoshop, you're like, oh my gosh, right? Mm -hmm. Mad. Now you're like, boom, boom, boom. You're all over the place because you know it inside and out. So the same thing should go with your clothes, especially when you're with these high priced clients. You want to be like on the flow. Like I said, if you talk to your friend, you probably wouldn't stumble. You'd be like, oh yeah, I know. I know my friend, he's going to say this, he doesn't want to go wild. There's two, you know, you know what he's going to say. So you're like, I know what you're going to do. 
So for me, what really helped is when I literally, I had to write it out and then I read it. I just did a little voice memo on my phone. And before I take any call, I always re-listen to that. But in my spare time, if I'm doing work, I'll put that on the back burner. So I'm just constantly hearing myself reply to these objections so that, because I know, you know, I know, you know, you get that objection. You're like, shit, okay. It, it throws you off, especially when they're like a big wig. You're like, ah, you freak out. But the more it comes easily for you, you're like, oh, I've heard this. I, not only have I heard it, I've said it a million times in my head. It's going to come out super duper easy. So if you're really thinking like, what can I really do to get used to handling these objections, especially with these big clients where you're a little nervous, you have to, you have to practice. You know, this is, somebody said, you don't practice in the game. <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody practices in the game. You, sports athletes, everybody, you practice before the game. You don't go, oh, well, I'll figure it out once I get on the call. No, practice before the game. So when you're in the game, it's, it comes naturally. You don't have to think about it. Isn't it wild how people run their businesses that way, but they would never run a, a sports game like that? Like they, you know, like a lot of, I've never played formal sports in my life, but it goes to show that like people are just quick to jump in without really planning out and strategizing. I mean, it's amazing how many people do that. And, you know, I was reading this book. It was great. Um, it's by an old mob boss. And he said that he would have people come to him left and right asking him for money, you know, to get, you know, a little startup seed money here and there. And the first question he would ask is, how, what's your plan? And they were like, well, make money. And he would say, well, how? And he, they would say, well, like everybody else does it. Not a good answer. And he wouldn't fund those people. Yeah. Because they just didn't have a plan. And so it's about, it's about the coffee conversation. Like uh, it's the coffee conversation and, and people are like, what are you talking about? I'm jumping a little bit all over the place a little bit, but, but bear with me here. Right? Like, like people get, people get starstruck. They get a little nervous when they get, when they get challenged back. Right. And they start to backpedal. I love what you said about the friend. And if the friend challenges you back, would you, would you, would you say you win? and stop the conversation? No, you go back at them. So the way my mentor said it to me one day, it's Henry, you're having a coffee conversation with these people. That's it. Like there's no hidden agenda. You re they're either gonna buy it or not gonna buy. Like you have no control over that other than helping them honestly, honestly now, get to the root issue of whatever it is painting them and why they reached out to you in the first place. If you can ask questions, and here's the point that I really want to make, and I hope, it, I hope it hits home. When you can guide them in the direction to helping them see the answer, not you, them. If you have the patience to do that, your prospect calls, your consultative sales, your business is gonna go through the roof. Here's the deal. Nobody really values free on a deep core level. They don't. So what, I'll give you a funny example. I'll give you a real life example. I work with my brand accelerator clients, $10,000 buy-in, and we work together one-on-one -on -one and help them really build out their strategy. I caught myself when I first got into this, getting these people on the call and then like filling out the entire process and them just staring at me going, okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Right, and they got nothing out of it. I think in the long run, they got nothing out of it. Now, when a client comes through that program, I don't care if there's three minutes of silence. I will challenge them. And so I start asking them questions and I dive deep, 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 deep down into its so laser focused and clear. And they're like, well, Henry, will you know, help me out here? No, <laughs> no. All right, it starts, I'll help you a little bit. It starts with a T. And then, but they have, and what happens is they start to build this muscle on their own. And as a coach, it is tough 
to watch people wiggle and squiggle and squirm. But if they don't go through it, you have kids, right? Yeah. When your little guys started to walk, when they fell, what did you do? Well, you pick them up and you reset them. Okay, cool. But then what? Tell me. See, this is the part I'm talking about. No, well, you, you, no. For me, once they fall down, you pick them up. You go, it's okay, and we reset, and then we start over again. And we go, okay, you're gonna get up. You're gonna walk again. You're gonna give it another try. You didn't try to walk for them, did you? No, of course not. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, you get them up. You reset them again. Now, here you go. You have to. You have to keep going. They have to. Yeah, like you said, you can't. And this too, when you talk about the silence, like. Silence is like, it's, it can be really powerful. Like you ask, like, that was one of the things in, in, if you read enough sales books, you'll start to hear this over and over, which is ask a question and shut up. <laughs> so many times, and this is really kind of what you were talking about is you ask a question, there's a pause, and then you feel like you need to answer it for them. Like, no, 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 no. They need to start saying it. They need to start having it. And I was going to go to one thing as well. You know, I like for me, I like to write things out, like what I'm going to say and, and things like that. And people are like, well, I don't want to use a script or whatever. And I'm like, well, it's a script until you know it by heart. But I always tell people like your prospect, they have a script and they know it by heart and they don't even know that they know it. If you're walking, you know, in a store back when Best Buy used to be popular, you're walking through the TVs and a guy comes up, hey, can I help you? Everybody says the exact same thing. Nah, I'm just looking. Even if you do need help, a lot of people are like, nah, I'm just looking. I know that script by heart. I don't even, ha- I didn't have to write it. I just say it. And, or, right, we do our pitch and we know they're going to, well, let me think about it. They don't even have, they didn't write it down. But now when he pitches to me, I'm going to say, no, they know it and they know it inside and out. So when you get into these and even knowing these strategic pauses, the more you do, you can be like, okay, I'm going to ask them this and they're probably going to hesitate. But if I say, what is there, you know, like, like you said, well, what is there to wait for? What are we waiting for? You have to stop talking and let them answer. That's right. That's right. You know, your mouth could get you in some deep trouble. (laughs) You know, when I was a little kid, I was a scrappy little mofo. So, like, I remember how quick my mouth used to get me in trouble. And same thing now, you know, it's, I've landed way more business in my life, I would say the past 36 months, by talking actually less than ever in my entire life. I've gotten more things completed in my favor by simply listening more and asking directed questions. <laughs> and you, you, you know, I always use this example, like Yoda didn't tell Skywalker what to do. He gave him the outline and made Skywalker figure it out. And that's what we need to do here. And when you do that and they come to the realization on their own, that's when you become a legend in their, in their mind. You know, that's why I hire, my coach asked me the other day, he said, why do you keep coming back so consistently to me? I'm $1,000 an hour. I said, so I gave him two reasons. I said, one. Hold on, wait, Henry. Did he interrupt you and give you the answer or did he shut up and let you tell him the answer? That's the point. Right? Yeah. That's the, <laughs> that, that's the point. That's the point. But when he made me dig deep, when he made me dig deep, I was like, that's why. That's, that's, that's why I keep going. You see blind spots that I can't say. And that is why I keep coming back, number one. Number two, I need to continuously level myself up. And if I don't continue to reinvest in myself through mentorship, then I don't deserve to. I don't deserve to charge these prices. I don't deserve to um, even have the clients that I have because I'm no better than them, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you, 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 I always think about this: like the more you invest in yourself, 
the more you're going to become attractive and the more you're going to feel that confidence and you're going to say, I can, I can move mountains here. And yeah. that was the point of today's conversation. You know, I want to, I want to start to wrap up, but like, that's what I really wanted people to get out of this conversation was it comes down to a little bit of strategy. It comes down to a little bit of confidence, you know, at the end of the day you have to do. And if there's anything that you have to do more than anything these days is challenge. I would say also, you know, where they talk about you're the, uh, what are the, you're the sum of the five people you hang out with. I forgot how that goes. Yeah. Because part of the thing that changed when I was a painting contractor, so this will kind of tie this in for you, is one day I was painting and it was like a condominium with a bunch of older people that lived there. And the guy, this guy came, rang the doorbell. He was like the super, but he was painting all their condos on the side. Comes up and he goes, uh, he goes, hey, uh, what, what are you up to? I told him because we had to use the freight elevator so he didn't know what was going on. So I told him, he goes, oh, he goes, you're painting in here? I go, yeah. He goes, uh, how much are you charging? And I told him, he goes, really? And I go, yeah. Now this is, this was, now I was in Chicago and this was like this not great presentable kind of guy, just kind of a not great dude, <laughs> alcohol on his breath. He goes, really? That's what you're charging? I go, yeah. He goes, I'm doing these all day for three times that. And I remember thinking like, what? How are you doing that? How are they paying for that? Or like, how are you able to charge that? And part of like mentorship, like you talked about, and even starting to hang around people that are where you want to be. Because again, I couldn't even imagine that I could charge or ask for that price. So once you start, either you have a mentor who's where you want to be and he keeps telling you like, dude, you've got to raise your prices mm -hmm. or you start hanging out with people and you're like, well, all these people are charging this and they're getting clients. What am I'm going to, you know, then again, you start to have that confidence like, okay, people will pay and people are charging it and being successful. And again, that goes with like you talked about finding mentors, whether it's an individual or starting to hang out with people that are charging prices that you want to be at. And then your brain will start to go, oh yes, this is acceptable and it's acceptable for me mm -hmm. and I can, I can start to do this. So I love, yeah, I love this. What's funny about you is that every time I hear you speak, you talk about mentorship and it's so true. And people always want to skip out on that. Even if you can't at this point, find a, somebody that you're going to, you're going to pay for, start hanging out with people that are going to level you up. That's right. Right. And if you can't do that, start with books, but really once you start, cause on a book, you're like, well, that worked for him, but I don't know that guy. When it's somebody that you've actually met and you're like, I know this guy, yeah. he's no better than me. He's not smarter than me, no. but he's able to do these things. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you start to rub off on them and that's, that, that leads me into the, the thing I've, I really wanted to talk about real quick before we jet is my group coaching program. You know, one of the things that I realized that I love to teach, I love to mentor, I love to help people. And I really wanted to create a platform that was intimate and that had a place for people to come and say, you know what, I feel safe here. And I feel like I'm, I'm going to be led in the right direction here. I believe and trust him, Henry, but I also like the intimate setting because I only have about 15, 20 people into this. And once it gets to 20, I'm done. Like I close it down. Because I, I, I truly believe you go more than that and, and you start to, it starts to dilute a little bit and it's tough to really deliver that value, right? That I'm trying to deliver. But this, this monthly coaching, we meet, we meet twice a, a month and it's in a private Facebook group and we go in and we present issues. So everyone gets an hour. So what, what like, so Ray, if you were in the, if you were in the group, <laughs> you would come to me prior and say, all right, this Tuesday, you know, is there any room for me to book a spot? Yes, there is. So you come to me and we go live like this. It's pretty cool. And we have the other 10 folks just watching and you have an hour to present anything that you'd like. 
And then what happened is I, I do my best to help serve you, but then the other people start to chime in as well. So you get that added bonus, right? And then the next week, somebody else steps up and now you're in the audience and that person. And so now people are starting to see that and they're like, oh, wow. Like, look what he just did for him. Look how I could apply that. And it's just this dynamic, it's this beautiful setting. And I truly believe it is the way to grow business. It is the way to grow your network. It's just the way to learn these days. And you got to have those platforms set up because people are, are dying to become better. You know, some people are complacent. They like to be where they want to be. And then they, they just, that's their thing. Right. But, and that's fine. Yep. But the folks that you really want to, that really want to grow, that feel like they could be doing more, should be doing more and want to do more. This program is phenomenal because it's going to keep you on the right track and you're going to feel like those solid building blocks and steps are right underneath you at every level. And, and that I wish, I wish I had something like that back when I started. Yeah. Facebook groups like that couldn't find them. And even networking back then was, you know, you could, you could find something, but couldn't find something in your niche. And you, you're like, well, who's local? And you have like one local guy or whatever. And it's like, eh, but what's great about this people watching here, they're like, okay, I like, I like the way Henry talks or I like the way Ray talks. And I like this. I can relate to these guys, uh, which is why I love coming on and talking to you. Cause you and I kind of have a very similar energy. Yeah. Like I, you know, I can't sleep walk through something or I certainly can't watch people that are sleep. Uh, no, not, not going to have it. No. But yeah. Being able to find people now is so, and find people that can relate to you. And of course, as you're selling, you have to make it easy for people to find you as well. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, being able to find it, yeah, is really amazing. So it, just before we go, if anybody like, if you do like what I'm saying on, uh, you can find me, the, the place I'm most active is, is Instagram. You can find me at it's underscore Rakers. Uh, I do a lot of stuff like this where we're talking about sales and, you know, helping you grow your business. And of course, this is where I found Henry because he's just got all the prime primo content on <laughs> listen man i tried dude I'm, I'm not the best guy on the planet and I'm, I'm constantly trying to level up but you know i will bring you my story i'll bring you my take i'll bring you my perspective and i mean that that's all that's the best i could give you you know i'm not trying to you know show up in a rolls royce and then riding around the corner there's my honda accord that i gotta go jump into because that's really my car you know that's that's not me and I will continue to just bring you the real deal and you're either going to resonate with it or you're not. And that's the best I could do. And that's what I would, I would, I would strongly advise the folks that are watch, watching this to reconsider when marketing your business and building your business and growing your brand, like all that nonsense will come back and bite you in the ass and, you know, really, really, uh, cut and kill your credibility and authority yeah no and congruency right you no congru show one thing and then you get like oh yeah i'm not really that person exactly and that that's just gonna whack you so you're gonna you're gonna whack yourself when you do that so i don't i don't want to see that happen so right it's always a pleasure we got to do this again soon Thank you so much for coming on the show, dude. Absolutely, man. I really do appreciate being on here. And again, anybody watching, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. But I, I like, we're, we're all business owners here, right? And I, I love to see people succeed. So if you're kind of having a shitty day, <laughs> just this, just that's today. We can do better tomorrow or even better this afternoon. You got the best, man. dude. If at all, you have to go to it's underscore Rakers, R-A-K-E-R-S on Instagram and just watch this guy's memes. You will piss your pants. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we met. That's how we that's met. True. Like, that's true. I kept hearing his stuff and I was like, dude, this is so good. Anyway, guys, real quick, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. Drop some comments below. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was if you have further questions. Uh, I would love to keep this conversation going. Obviously, I will, I will link up um, 
Ray's uh, URL to Instagram in the show notes. Go check that out as well. I hope you got some value out of today, guys. And uh, if anything at all, action on what it is that we're saying. Don't just listen to us. Don't just watch us in 1.5 speed to get it over with. Take this and run with it. I'm telling you, you will, you will start to see a huge shift in how you start to attract a higher quality client. So have an amazing day, guys. I catch you on the next one. Later. Oh, 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 oh,